Hence, theoretically, you know, the per capita income. Because yes. the per capita income considers the total GDP uh, divided by the population. True. Right? So it didn't say, uh, uh, Christy, this is your own, Prince, well, this is your own. It's just everybody equal, right? So it will help. And when there is, you know, perceived increment in the per capita income, it helps to attract investors. Yes. Who will say, okay, ah, these people's per capita income is 20,000. That means they have more purchasing power parity mm -hmm. compared to other economies. Mm. So that is why we need them. Outside the multiplier effect, you know, and also having them will also help us to attract other people, right? Yeah. Because of what is happening in Ghana at this point in time. You know, with the, I, with the African continental free trade sector being cited there, automatically it sent a wave. So, and I think I'm happy that we are doing this. Yeah. The essence of this is that so that the policymakers will look at the areas to tweak, True. you know, True. to get Nigeria uh, out you, of You spoke about per capita income. So, I just want to move straight to the, the graph on the chart on the annual budgets. Now, yeah. the 2021 annual budget for Ghana, we have $9.27 billion. Yes. For Nigeria, $35.9 billion. Yes. For South Africa, we have an annual budget of 96 dollars billion dollars and like we rightly stated that's close to a billion dollars for the billion 100 billion dollars for the budget the budget for south africa okay. and like prince we rightly mentioned these budgets are, are normally denominated in the currency of the countries but the greenback the dollar is the currency of the world yeah. so it's converted to the the dollar to get what the budget size is and i, I a very renowned policy analyst talk with fashua i know you have worked your box closely <laughs> yes Tokwe fashua. this is a conversation that always comes up whenever he's called to talk about the economy he talks about how the budget of nigeria is still quite small yeah. for the the population of the country now let, 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 let me have you speak to the 2021 annual budget that's across board yes and also so, the budget so, so if you look at the 2021 budget mm. it clearly shows that we are not doing enough there is limited funds going to health going to education these are key aspects these are key deliverables why the government exists yes right so we we have been unable to raise sufficient funds because we're unable so when some of us say we should be doing a minimum of 50 a minimum of 60 i remember last time i was in a in a, in a television station i said we have no business doing less than 100 billion dollar and somebody looked at me and said are you okay if south africa with a population size of 60 million can budget to spend over 96 billion. billion, then Nigeria with a population of 210 should end nothing. It then, it then begs the question, Prince William. How do you fund exactly. it? Exactly. Where will the monies come from? Definitely. So the question is, you know, I'm so passionate whenever I'm speaking on issues like this. Mm. How is South Africa funding its budget? See, you don't just need, you don't redesign the spoke some things have already been done so one we look at okay what is the task system and i tell you there are a whole lot of leakages in the system so these leakages i i just want to use a very simple illustration see you are supposed to collect money hundred thousand which will now be used to share you will share among your family members so somebody, you will not send somebody to go and collect that money. The person now collects 500,000 500, instead of the 100,000. The person now collects, okay, 50,000, for instance. Now came and gave you 20,000. That is what happens. Mm. So there are leakages. And whenever, what is happening to our mineral resources? What is happening to, what are we doing well when it comes to industrialization? What is the contribution of um, industrial products to the uh, tax that is being collected by federal land revenue down to the budget? It's because as businesses are making more profit, they are paying more taxes, government is getting more resources, and there will be increase in the budget if all things being equal. So if along the line, there are, you know, because of corruption, because of inefficiencies in the tax collection system, then some money drop along the line. So automatically it won't get to the budget. It won't get to. So also, how is the NMPC run? 
Now, what is the contribution of the oil and gas industry to the general budget circle? So these are some of the questions. So the essence of this is that you bring a country, you look at it and say, okay, this is where we are not getting it right. We are having a whole lot of leakages along the line. Maybe we need to computerize, use IT to close this. Uh, so we, we saw what happened to single treasury uh, account. Yeah, you know, the way it was able to, um, you know, close that end end of the year uh, rush procurement process. Yes. You know, because people want to extinguish the fund. So at this point in time, that automatically helps to. So we can use IT to close up. But you need to close up one thing you have been able to identify. If you are unable to identify a problem, there is no way you will be able to close such problem. So the first thing we need to do, and I'm charging, I'm encouraging anybody, any writer, any reader, is to help us digest what South Africa is doing right that we are not doing right. Then we look at it, look at the ones we can adopt, look at the ones we have to drop. Okay. But whether we should be able to budget and to su support 100 billion US uh, uh, dollar budget, we can actually do that. Okay, okay, we can actually do that if we are able to block leakages and yes. also harness some of the resources we have. And diversify our economy. Yes, diversify. That's a song we have been singing for a very, very long time, apparently. Now, let's go straight to the chat on inflation rates. Now, we're, we're looking at inflation rate across the three countries that we are seeing the comparative advantage come yeah. from. Now, we have Ghana. Ghana has an inflation rate. This is current inflation rate now, yes. as of recently. Yes. 10.30%. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have an inflation rate of 18.17%. And South Africa has an inflation rate of 3.20%. Now, so, on the other hand, sorry, <laughs> conversely, we have debt to GDP also on that chart. Yeah. We are seeing Ghana 59.30%, Nigeria 17.50%. Not, so, not a bad threshold, you say? No. Not a bad threshold for Nigeria and South Africa 62.20%. Speak on the inflation rate. Probably. Okay, so the inflation rate, um, the inflation rate measures the increase in prices of goods and mm. services over a period of time. Yeah. So if you look at the inflation rate, and one thing about inflation is that inflation is only is not bad, but what happens is that inflation causes uh, unpredictability in an economy. Mm -hmm. So you won't be able to say, okay, this is what is going to happen. I bought this product 100,000, so anytime I go back to the market, the mass, you know, it can, the, 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 the maximum increment I can expect on this product is, uh, say, 105,000. So that means there is a 5% increment in, but here is 18%. So what this means is that if you have a form, 100,000, idle in the bank, automatically at every point in time, 17%, 18% is moving. Hmm. So if you have 100,000, you are losing 18,000 idle fund. So it also means that for you to be able to make profit, for you to be able to invest in Nigeria, your business must be able to generate profit more than 18% inflation rates for you to be able to have your capital. So while you are doing a feasibility study, and your feasibility study is saying you need to invest 100,000, the mass, the minimum return, you know, you get is 15%. So you see, you can't come to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You have to go to a country like South Africa. You have to go to a country like Ghana, where the, the inflation rate is lower than that your uh, computed um, profit, mm -hmm. profit margin. So that is why inflation is important. The ability to predict, the ability to say, okay, I can sell and it will, there won't be uh, stock out, there won't be uh, cash flow challenges when I want to restock. So that is why inflation rate is very key. But also, inflation rate is also important because it helps businesses to grow. Explain, why? Explain because the uh, Adam Smith will always tell you the invisible hand. That invisible hand is not that there is, a, there is an invisible hand. That invisible hand is profitability. You know, the drive, human drive for uh, profits. So that is the invisible hand. So if an economy, all things being equal, if an economy has higher inflation, it means that there, can, there might be higher paying, higher return assets. Because for every economy that is experiencing a doom hmm, or a beer, has an opposing boom. Yes. So it means that if this business has a higher inflation rate, which 
to a very large extent determines the interest rates. Mm. Because that's what the banks will look at when they're giving yes, you loan true, and all the rest true. of them. So it will also attract, it might attract, you know, higher profitability. So that's why, you know, you will now look at it, okay, at this point in time, our, our risk appetite says we can't do anything more than 15% mm. inflation rates. So it means we have to look out for businesses, opportunities that can give us 15% and above. So that's why that figure is very key. And that is why the current administration said their aim is to move inflation to a single digit. So they understand the importance of inflation in an economy. At this point, when do you foresee a single digit inflation in Nigeria? Are we, is, are we, is, is it going to be possible in this year 2021? Uh, to me, I don't think it's going to be possible this 2021. Maybe towards the later end of 20. 22. The reason being, there are certain fundamentals that are pushing the inflation. So we saw the issue of, you know, headers, farmers' crisis. We have the issue of, you know, which, of course, is affecting food uh, supply. Yes. So if food supply continues to lag behind demand, so it will always keep pulling inflation. Okay. Now let's move to the next chart now. We have corruption index and ease of doing business. Now for Ghana, we have both for corruption index, we have 75. For ease of doing business, we have 118. For Nigeria, for, for corruption index, Nigeria is ranked 149. Now, I think, I guess that's TI, Transparency yes, International. definitely. Then for, for ease of doing business from the World Bank, Nigeria is ranked 131. For South Africa, for corruption index, we have 69 points there, 69 position, ranked 69. And ease of doing business, South Africa is ranked at 84. So apparently Nigeria 131 for ease of doing business yeah. first now. Let's talk about ease of doing business. So ease, ease of doing business, you see that uh, Nigeria, we are... So what this chart really means is that it's more difficult doing business in Nigeria. You know, the higher you go, the the more difficult it becomes. Yeah. yeah. So in Ghana, in South Africa, it's a bit easy, yeah. but in Nigeria, you have to meet about you know the the score. I think is about eight six point three Nigeria score. So which is not uh, too fantastic. And of course, so when we now look at this ease of doing business, what are the components of this ease of doing business? So you have the uh, human capacity. In this, which is health, which is education, which is um, accessibility to markets, power, and that is where some of this, you know, when you read the news up from the collapse of the grid this yes. morning, so I looked at it and said, these are some of the factors that, you know, add to this ease of doing business. So you want to come to Nigeria, so to start a business, that means you have to buy your own generator. If not, one day they will tell you the grid collapsed, and then, so those are the components. What is the number of uh, lettered people in Nigeria who are ready and willing to work? Um, how secured, how healthy, you know, is Nigerians that today they can now say, okay, uh, we can work, you know, for the next six months without breaking down. So all these are the components. So you have the economic, you have the you have education, then you have yes. health. They are the complaint of human capacity. Now, I want you to... Con is, what's the nexus now between corruption and attracting investment? Yes. So, we are not, uh, we are not from uh, Kenya. So, we are going to Kenya to do business. Mm. So, before, from, right from the airport, you are seeing a corrupt custom official, for instance, telling you that uh, uh, this is your Ogafine or something. Right? From there, you have a taxi driver that is willing that want to swindle you of your resource. Then you say, okay, you want to register your business. It's of you to register. I tell you, sir, unless you go through somebody, mm -hmm. if not, you can't register direct. You ended up registering direct. And then for you to get your certificate to start business is very difficult. And then you ended up getting certificate. You want to get land to start the business. Then before you get land, it will take another three years for you to get your C of O. And then after getting your C of O, then another government comes and cancels it. Then, so these are, I'm just yes, yes, yes. you how it is. So when you, when the way people, so when we did, I participated in last ease of doing business. So there were some low-hanging fruits. For instance, 
uh, dispute resolution for businesses. So we are of the opinion that several countries, this is one area that, you know, they ranked us low. Yes. They ranked the subnationals low. So we are saying these state governors, are they not aware of this? Just open a committee or something with the help of the, uh, the Minister of Justice, set up a committee, set up an arm, you know, of the law that will take care of normal commercial businesses. Give them timeline. We, every, every, every commercial dispute must be resolved within, say, five months, six months. Anything you do, you have, like we have the political cases now, that there is a timeline yes. to reach. Imagine where you have, you know, timeline, you have special courts that address business disputes, and they have timeline to reach, because, so it really yeah, helps. I want, we have an industrial court in Nigeria. Do you think they've not been... How long is it? How, how long um, does the industrial court resolve a dispute? If I have a business dispute with you, and it's going to take us five years, ten years, to me, I was not the one that said justice de delayed is justice denied. Yes. So, so if we can make it faster, it will help. And it will, it will, it will, it will increase, at least enhance our rating. Okay, still staying with rating, let's quickly meet, move to the global terrorism ranking. Yeah. For the global terrorism ranking, the chart, we have Ghana at 82, yes. high above there, Nigeria standing at 3. And for South Africa, we are seen at 41. Yeah, so those are the, those are the fillers, you know, yes. coming up from Nigeria. Yes. So yes. 3 is very frightening. And that is why we have to make that red. Mm. You know, so an average investor like me that is afraid, you know, all things being equal, I wouldn't. We don't so want to put your money thing. where your monies are not and safe. That is, where, that is where we are calling on the government to do everything In possible security. to secure this country. I think that just caps it all. It yeah. is very important because a lot, a lot of conversations have gone on around security, 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 and how it is, the, it is at the center of it all. Of, of it all. They said things fall apart, the center cannot hold. We need that center to hold. Now, yeah. I think from the, the Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission, we saw investment announcements were made in the first quarter of 2021. And I, and I stumbled on a conversation, and it was being said that how are we sure that these investors are going to carry on with these announcements? Because they are only but announcements. Yeah. Beyond just yeah. announcement, we need to also see that those announcements materialize, materialize. into proper investment that will create jobs and yeah. add value to the economy. Let's go to tax rate now. Tax rate versus VAT sales tax. That chart, we're seeing Ghana 25% for tax rates. For yeah. VAT, we're seeing 13.50%. Nigeria, 30%. And the other arm, um, we're seeing 7.5%. South Africa, 27%, and yeah. the other one we're seeing 18%. Yeah, so I also believe this was one of the things that the managers of the economy saw, that they had to work on the 20, yes. uh, to, uh, to finance. 2020 yes, finance, finance act, law. you know, to uh, work on this. So I think it's key. But also look at the um, VAT. Mm. You know, Nigeria still have some room. True. But the timing is one thing. You know, you can have a room to increase. But if you dare increase the VAT <laughs> now that the fuel is unstable, price of fuel is unstable, fueling, you know, high cost of transportation, of course, which is fueling the inflation, yes. then increasing, contributing to the uh, price increase, you know, of food items. So if you, if you tweak that VAT now, automatically it's going to have a triple effect that you wouldn't want. So that's why I think I'm in line with the managers of Nigerian economy that it's not yet time to so increase, increase the VAT rate. Yeah. Let's go to the unemployment rate. Unfortunately, that's the last we have on that chat on employment that's been in the front burner for some time now in conversations yeah. around the economy business, even social political conversations. Really capacity has to do largely with unemployment. So Ghana's unemployment rate we have we are seeing from that chart is at seven point one zero percent. South Africa is at thirty two point five zero percent. And in Nigeria we have an unemployment rate of thirty three point three zero percent now that's that's not a good look yeah i think we have all not, we have all agreed that that's not, not a good, a good look, look for nigeria it's although i also know look. south africa is battling an unemployment issue yeah but we are seeing nigeria now topping the chart here in the comparative analysis we are doing now with three other countries yeah 
So Nigeria, we are chatting, we are, we are leading, we are leading in that uh, uh, index because um, our, our employment generating capability is lower than our um, population growth. So our GDP growth also it's is lower also lower than our population, than growth. Our population yes. growth. Of course, which every uh, finance or economics uh, person would know that this, with time, so the backlog, we keep adding. So you need to change the dynamics. You need to change the, uh, you know, to make sure that if your population growth, Nigeria for the past five, six years, we've been averaging between 2.5 to 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that means we need an economic growth of nothing less than 5%, yes. at least to double the population growth. At least for the next 10 years, we can move substantial number of our people out, out of unemployment rate. But unless there is no intervention, whether uh, wind flow, windfall, no matter that kind of intervention that you will do, that will address unemployment until your economy grows mm. more than your population growth. I think, that's, I think that's a good way to cap this whole conversation up today. We cannot have a population that is growing higher than and the economy. economy. That simply that that spells not a not a good message for Nigeria. And and I, I think that this 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 chart that you have brought up has sent the message, which is quite clear. They say numbers don't lie. Data. Yeah don't lie. We have given the numbers a face and you have also preferred solutions to what can be done for Nigeria's economy to become better. Because in the end, when the economy gets better, it benefits all. And it gives more people the, the situ more people the space, more yeah. MSM is the space to thrive. Thank you so much, Prince Will Izuku, Thank you for, for having me. always coming on the program and also putting up this robust data to support the discussion that we have had today. Quite an insightful one. So I, I told my viewers just before we started that it's going to be an insightful conversation today. And I think we lived up to that expectation. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And happy, I think I, I need to say happy holidays <laughs> also yeah. to you. To yeah, you. we really uh, need it. Yes. <laughs> and that's, that's where we wrap up the conversation for today. Thank you also for watching and investing your time with us always on Cosmopolitan Market comes to you 11 a.m. daily on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. Kindly follow us on all our social media platforms on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and on our website for more information on what goes around in the world of commerce, economy, business, finance, investment. My name is Christiana Amodu. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>